give another award that is, uh, is not been done uh, on a regular basis. In fact, in the 25 years that I've been president, this award has only been given six times in the history of the award. And it's the President's Distinguished Award. And it, uh, someone said, well, how do you get it? And I say quickly, it takes a unanimous vote to achieve that. And uh, there is a secret society that participates in this process. And I am sworn to secrecy as to, uh, of course, uh, that process. The first winner of the award was Li Pai Wu. Li Pai Wu was the first Chinese uh, uh, student that attended Fort Hayes and then went on to be tremendously successful. He came to the United States because he was run out of his country for what he stood for. He was on the wrong side in that particular, well, probably the right side, but the wrong side when it came to the military. And he chose Fort Hayes, as he said in his acceptance speech, because he looked around and he saw that it was the most inexpensive MBA program that he could find, and so he came here, and he had a sister in St. Louis, and he saw that was in the center of the United States, so it was doable from his perspective. And for those of you who know, he went on then to be the CEO and chairman of the board of the National Bank of Alaska. Uh, he went on to become the CEO and uh, also part owner of Western Airlines when it went bankrupt and take it out of bankruptcy and made millions of dollars, which he turned into Gold Bank, which he then took to uh, Forbes magazine, making the cover of Forbes magazine, always going on and pointing out that he learned about how to run businesses at Fort Hayes State. And then on retirement, returned to Formosa to be chief of staff to President Lee, uh, who was also a gentleman that was run out of the country with him because they were in school together and on the wrong side of that uh, political debate. Other people that have gotten the award are Mickey Spillane, Bob Dole, just minor people who have made significant contributions to our country and to our culture and our history. And tonight we, are, we honor the seventh individual to receive our outstanding uh, President's Award. And so at this time I'd like to ask Gary Shearer to please join me at the dais. Gary Shearer um, and I have known one another since 1962. He didn't remember me back then, but I remembered him. He had just won the National Bay Championship with a colleague. Shearer and Lawson were notoriously uh, tough competitors on the collegiate debate circuit in his last year of, uh, of competition. And he was uh, graduating, and so Emporia was trying to figure out a way to reload, and they got stuck with four freshmen. Uh, I was happened to be one of the four that uh, was selected and recruited to try to replace him. I guarantee you we didn't even come close to winning a national championship. But he went on to make significant difference in the lives of many Kansans because not only was he the former, is he the former lieutenant governor of the state of Kansas, former chair of the Kansas Board of Regents, uh, he is also made, the, made leadership and education important part of our state and important part of his life. When you look at Gary, he earned his bachelor's degree from Emporia State. He began his career as a public school teacher, specializing in speech and debate before entering the field of banking where he was involved with Bank 4 when I came back to the state 25 years ago. He was one of the vice presidents. He uh, went on to become secretary of the Department of Commerce from 95 to 2002, and uh, led the efforts to really help grow Kansas. He, in his term, increased our job rate by 42,000. He trained and was responsible for training programs that trained over 100,000 Kansans and produced $2 billion in capital improvements to the state. And talking with uh, Governor Graves, who called me when he heard about the fact we were giving the award, and said, Ed, I really, Linda and I would really like to be there, uh, but because of a prior commitment, we can't. He said, would you tell a story, because most people don't know, that Gary Shear had a plan. And it was a plan to make Kansas better. 
and he said there's two things you need to do to make the state better. You have to do something with Wyandotte County. Now, this is a Republican administration worrying about Wyandotte County. You've got to do something with Wyandotte County. And you can turn the Kansas City area into just this tremendous en engine of growth. And so he spearheaded the, the project of going down and getting the Kansas Speedway project assigned to the state of Kansas because we were competing with other states. Went down to Florida, close to the uh, little shack on the beach that the ghouls own uh, there in Daytona, and made the pitch on behalf of Kansas. And when I was talking to the Francis not long ago, because I'm working on a project with them for uh, a project there in Kansas City, they said it was Gary Shearer that made the difference. And Governor Graves made it clear to me that it was Gary Shearer's idea to change Wyandotte County by creating something called the Star Bonds and creating a development that not only involved the, the racetrack, but the land around it that we now see being developed. And he has changed uh, Kansas City. He and his late wife, Judy, did so much while they were citizens together in Wichita. One of the things that I always hold as the most important thing, or one of the most important things he did, was creating Leadership Kansas, which was, I think, one of the most significant things in our state, and so many people have benefited from that program. He and Judy had two children, Nancy and Stuart, but more importantly, Nancy has a grand has a child that now makes him a grandfather, which now in his retirement is his number one job. At this time, I would like to present our university's highest award for public service to my friend and to someone I always looked up to for his leadership in public service, Gary Shear. Thank you so much. Uh, I will tell you, if, if no other reason I'm proud to have this award tonight is, unlike most of you, I finally get to stand up. <laughs> and it really feels good. <laughs> so, so if you have that need, go ahead. You're not going to offend me. Uh, just a couple of things, and then I'll get to a couple of notes and get out of your way here. But. Uh, the, the racetrack story, one thing I will tell you, because I was watching today, and you know, they're racing this week, and, and uh, uh, Old Man France was a tough, tough bird, let me tell you, he was, he was hard to negotiate with. But we did get to the place where it looked like we were all ready to go, and then I said to him, there's only one other thing you need to know, and, and he said, what's that? And I said, I will not sign the star bonds unless the track is called the Kansas Speedway. It cannot be called the Kansas City Speedway because I don't want it confused with Kansas City Chiefs in Missouri, the Kansas City Royals in Missouri. Um, I mean, I still harbor real feelings about Quantrill and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't gonna let that happen. So that's why it is the Kansas Speedway because that's what it, it should be. Uh, first, I want to I, I want to do a couple thank yous too. Uh, you were introduced to uh, Dr. Ed Flinzy, who's the interim president of Emporia State University, and for him to have taken this time to come out and sit with me as sort of part of my family is is really special, and and uh, I'm really touched by it. Someone who wasn't introduced at our table, but is Ken Hush, and Ken is uh, the chair of the Emporia State University Foundation, and he has worked harder the last two years than, and I'm just here to tell you, than any chair that's ever served in that capacity. But I'm gonna tell you what kind of a friend he is. He just got back, he, his responsibilities are small uh, in his career. He just has a responsibility for all of Europe and all of Asia. And uh, he is not good enough again, apparently, to get South America. I do not know what his problem is, but there's, <laughs> so. Uh, he just got back from a, a long trip to Europe, and Sunday he leaves for a long trip for Asia, and he gave up tonight to come from Wichita 
to sit at my table as my friend. And that is something those of you out here who are with friends know, and that's something I'll never forget. So thank you, Ken, for being here. Uh, I feel very comfortable at, at, in Hayes as a community and, and Fort Hayes State University. I know so many. I've worked with so many on so many different projects. I, uh, as Secretary of Commerce, I worked on bringing jobs to the community. We had some projects here. Uh, I've been able to work with the university people and get to know them as a regent. Uh, uh, Mark and I go back a long way when he was in Topeka, actually, before he came here. And I've gotten to know Provost Larry Gold. And before I got on the regents, I didn't even know what a provost was. And, uh, and apparently, Larry told me it's a, a Greek word for the m person who does all the work on a campus. <laughs> And I had never heard that before. And uh, so that's just some of the stuff you kind of learn. Now, I, I am living in Broomfield, Colorado, because that's where my granddaughter is. And that's, that's the whole reason I'm there. Uh, so let's just end the rumor that in exchange for this award, I was to leave Kansas. <laughs> That just absolutely isn't true. There's a three-year-old that has gotten me to, to leave Kansas. You know, I, I generally am pretty comfortable with words, but I will tell you, uh, as I thought about this tonight, um, I, I, there will not be enough words and enough effective words for me to express to you what this award means to me. It is so absolutely special to me. Um, you know, one thing about awards is, is you really measure them by who's giving them. I mean, there are lots of awards around for lots of things, but you measure by who's giving them. So I think about it, and I think, well, Fort Hayes State University, first of all. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm the only non-alum that's been up here tonight, but I am telling you, as one who's been on the campus of every single community college, every single technical school, and every single one of our state universities. And as someone who is not a graduate here, but is a graduate of rival school, this isn't a good university. This is an outstanding university in how it looks and how it feels and the quality of the people it produces. And so when something outstanding gives you an award, it does mean so very much to you. But the other aspect of who gives the award is it's the presidential award. And therefore, it means that it's, it's part of what Ed Hammond believes in and what he does. And I, I will tell you, what a talent. What a combination of vision and energy and all those skills that are able to translate a vision into reality. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. We've got some presidents who have been president of our state universities who have written books about themselves. Ed's a little different. He just writes history. And he writes history in a way that his impact in this quarter of century that he's been here on this university and this community and this state is immeasurable. I mean, I think, you know what happens to us? I think we start taking things for granted when they are so good. And we don't appreciate the fact that there are universities out there who are struggling. Their enrollments are not going up, their support isn't strong, and they, they don't have a beautiful campus. And that's why I am so proud of this award because it's coming from, I think, one of the most remarkable university presidents in any of our university systems history. And I think time will tell that uh, much better than I've been able to tonight. But equally important to me, and probably more important, is not his skills and his talents, but the fact that he is a real friend. You know, I think about Thomas Paine and the Sunshine Soldier. Well, let me tell you, there are Sunshine friends, too. And they like being there with you when things are going well, but they're never to be found when things are tough. These two guys are, are not those kind of friends. They're the real friends. 
this is the real guy. Now, I, I have this one problem, and that is I'm always in trouble because I tell people exactly how I feel about things. <laughs> and if, that is not necessarily always a good quality. When I left the Board of Regents, I'd always wanted to be a regent, believe it or not, ever since I knew what they were. But I never thought I'd be one. And as some of you know, I had a meeting and a half left to go. And if I just shut up and sit there, they would have given me a nice plaque and things would have gone well. But I think there are principles in your life that if you start giving up on them, I mean, when you start cutting corners on your principles, I don't think you have them. And actions were being taken that were not fair to one of our universities, in my judgment. And I was not going to be part of it. And I was not going to go along to get along so we'd have this nice, smooth thing. And so, in, abruptly, <laughs> in the middle of a meeting, I told the people how proud I am of our higher ed system and the people in it and the great job they do, how honored I was to have worked with them. But I was not about, I think my term was, life's too short to spend it with people you don't want to be around doing things you don't believe in doing. And with that, I left. Now, the fact that this guy was the first person and one of the few to call me and said a sentence to me. You deserve better than that. Your legacy is more than that. And then put his actions where his words were and said that he wanted me to accept this award. I'm telling you, that's when you know the character and the quality of a friend. And I am so, so very grateful that he was willing to do that when others were disappearing quickly over the horizon. Uh, one acknowledgement I do have to give, and, and Ed and, and Ken and, and Ed Falinji uh, are aware of this, that if, if I were to accept this award without acknowledging uh, my late wife, uh, for 45 years, we, uh, we were an interesting pair. Everybody loved her and tolerated me, and it was a, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty good combo, though. And uh, we, we got a lot done, and we have two great kids, great son-in-law, and no offense to any of you, but the world's cutest, smartest three-year-old granddaughter <laughs> possible. I am grateful to all of them because they've been so supportive of me all through the years and the things I've wanted to do. Let me just say this to you. I know there are people more deserving of this recognition than I am. I understand that, and, and you know it too. But I'm gonna tell you from the bottom of my heart, no one you could have given it to would be more grateful than I am to receive this, more honored than I am to receive this. And humble, unfortunately, is not an adjective that generally is used in describing me. But you have humbled me because this award has touched me so deeply at a time that is so important for me to be touched that way that I will never forget it. I will always remember Fort Hayes State University the people of the university and the people of this community. And this is just not another plaque. This is a strong memory that will never ever leave me. And for that, I will be forever grateful. Thank you very much. They like they like standing. Yeah, yeah.